Welcome everyone. So we'll start with the leading question. There are two qualifiers here, important, uh, and we'll quantify them, which is large scale and affordable. Okay. So this is the state of Indian healthcare. Okay. So you might have sort of seen the sensational headlines, India has a very poor quality healthcare. But that is actually not true. In fact, India probably today is one of the largest scale affordable healthcare systems. Except for the fact that we have about 20, 25, if you were to draw the margins, around 28% of population does not have access to affordable quality healthcare. Now, how do we define affordable? So when you have these discussions, uh, I see several uh, cells have health uh, department related people. So remember this number, about 4,000 to 5,000 rupees annually per person is what the country spends from public, from private, and the split is there. So if you were to define affordability at constant prices today, so at least 60% of the people are getting this form of healthcare. So this number is important. So what is the problem today? First is this 25% of the people don't have access. So any significant medical expenditure pushes them into a very bad state financially for several years. And that's where the government has come up with certain schemes. Now, the quality and access varies you know, widely across regions and within regions, particularly rural areas. So if we were to summarize the problem of healthcare in India in one way, which is how do we get quality healthcare at an affordable price, not just for the payer, but also for the government, who is the uh, payer in many cases and the provider. To rural areas. So that's the vision which we can, which we should set by 2047. It won't just be aspirational, it will be a necessity. So healthcare means different things to different people. Um, so I wanted to quickly give you a functional uh, description of healthcare. Now this talk is particularly not technology oriented because healthcare is essentially a human to human service and don't forget that in any solution that you're coming up with. And it is delivered through four pillars. You need the building, the infrastructure, you need the people, which is about 50 to 60 percent of healthcare expenditure, uh, even for the government. And you have the drugs and vaccines, and then you have equipment. So the next four or five minutes, we will look at where the gaps are in these four pillars. So let's start with the infrastructure. And many of you may not realize this, India actually has one of the best structural healthcare systems which is we literally have healthcare units right from catering to 4,000 to 5,000 people all the way to district level. And that's very, and you will realize this uh, success of this in states that are doing well. So that means that it is actually possible to do it up there. So again, you will hear some stories that India is very short of hospital beds, so on. So there is a, there is a qualifier to it. India actually has a reasonable amount of hospital beds, except it is skewed when it comes to urban and rural areas. Now, there is a facility shortage in rural areas, which is one of the problems which you will have to address. And if you look at it, where the problems are, you will realize it's not so much about funding. Setting up these facilities, yes, this costs money, but it's not so much about funding, but largely it is a question of governance and staffing them with people. So. Now let us look at the people problem. Again, you will hear two different, uh, in fact, same uh, newspaper will carry two different things. There are too many doctors and they are not able to find very, very rewarding jobs. And then you will hear that India has a doctor shortage. And that essentially is because of this distribution. So community health center, which is in the second tier, there are about 6,000 of them in the country. There is where there is a big problem, which is literally we are short by practically 60 to 70 percent of doctors. So if there is one question to you, how do you get about 15,000 doctors to serve in rural areas at block and probably five block level? This is a problem which I will throw it out to you. Now there are different solutions you can think of, which is you know, conscription, force them to go there. That has been tried here and there. It has some uh, difficulties. You can do a public-private partnership. 
and one of my colleagues had suggested this saying you know why do you have to actually make them be there all the time with now roads being developed you can have somebody and this is not a 24/7 you just need to have the person there at least once in two days he, this person can be transported from the district and i was just talking to somebody he say maybe even give him a lalbati right and people will know whether he is actually coming every day and we probably make it a more prestigious thing for doctors to serve in these areas so this is a core problem this without solving this problem uh, no amount of technology or any innovation is going to get 25% of the people get good quality health care now drugs and vaccines and medical equipment uh, probably about 25% of us spend and here the story is very interesting many of you may know india actually is the leader global leader in generic medication right? so we supply 20 25% of the global demand in uh, generic medication in vaccine is much higher there are continents which completely depend on india for vaccine but there is one challenge here which is now starting to get more pronounced about 60 to actually more than 60 about 80% of our ingredients come from uh, our interesting neighbor so this needs some serious attention because as we have seen when there is a stress you can get into a major issue and this will require some attention india incidentally is very also tells about how policy can cause unintended consequences the import started because we wanted to keep the drug prices low so the dpco order in 1950s actually said you know prices of drugs need to be controlled and we wanted the raw material to be cheaper so it was easier to import rather than make them here but we have all the uh, necessary uh, know how and uh, infrastructure we should start looking at it for entrepreneurs there are quite a few bio entrepreneurs here india has the potential to become a leader in bio pharmaceuticals right? sort of chemical based pharmaceuticals and this is already being seeded here and there if this is done then essentially we could do what we have done in drugs and vaccines in general medical equipment is exactly a, a contrasting story about 40000 45000 crores of medical equipment consumption today 80% is imported right? and uh, i see several faculty who are in the uh, healthcare cell and individual nuclear look at that but there is also a you know a reality a sobering reality so we have we can play catch up but it's always better to lead something by actually setting the standards and setting a uh, getting into area which is new which is like many equipment many engineering systems things are becoming more digital and software driven not so much in healthcare the percentage of digital and software systems in healthcare is less than 5% this is something especially with entrepreneurs and we heard the story from uh, junirwala on how medibody really took this quite far because it is telemedicine it doesn't solve all the uh, medical equipment problem but that is something india should definitely look at and i would like you to keep this in your mind when you do the uh, discussion now we'll take a pause here so we can almost play a very interesting puzzle game here there are all the ias officers i have marked in the green uh, just to give you a sense of it the fundamental challenge in any innovation in healthcare is you have to walk through this maze and this is a very accurate kind of a, a, a maze so there is a baby in the middle uh, you can see that so it is one of those systems where the user the beneficiary the payer the purchaser the policy and the regulator are actually quite misaligned it's almost like orthogonal in many ways really need a creative solutions for this because currently the way it stands is the if you want to introduce an innovation into the system it has to literally flow from top to down which is which is fine which is normal but the outcome and the benefits of it because they are not able to be aligned and articulated very little innovations that are produced in the country developed in the country reach the final beneficiary and the final user this is something that i want you to reflect on how we can do it and if you want some parallels certain parallel you can look at this it's somewhat of an education type problem especially school education but there the scale can be achieved digitally here the scale cannot be achieved digitally so you still need to solve this problem at a human level and so please think about it so we asked the leading question so let us sort of ask is this even possible 
I would say emphatically yes, because already 60% of the country gets affordable high quality health care. So, what does this mean? How do we get to 20-25%? Is financing a problem? Is money really the problem? Actually, it is not. So today, the states and the centers spend 1.4% of GDP on, on health. To double this is what everybody says. And that is not an impossible number, if you look at it. So that is the first thing I want you to be aware, that it's not the money alone is the problem. The fundamental core challenge seems to be how do you get governance and delivery at the rural level, which is about 25% of the population. And as I said, it doesn't cost that much money. We are talking about another 20,000 crore, 25,000 crore sort of money. But we are talking about 15 to 20,000 experts willing to provide care at the rural area. Again, I'm repeating that because I want you to look at how we can make that happen. Now, there are also lessons. Right? When you look at, you know, we should actually increase expenditure, we should do many things. I really want you to be careful of these traps. You don't want to end up in a situation in 2050 where we are spending 10, 12% of the GDP of India and we have seen what has happened with developed countries. It has literally become a liability where the last five years of lifetime consumes 85% of the expenditure. So please be very cautious of medicalizing healthcare and without saying, you know, we should completely follow the traditional things, which some of you may, uh, may not agree, we should draw upon heavily on what is available for free, which we probably take for granted, which is family, traditional medicine. You can't have a situation where a person for cold and cough is ending up in a district hospital every time. That is not only a drain on resources, it completely skews the economics. So that is something that I want you to be careful. Now we talk about India being a very young country, so almost 50% of uh, India's healthcare is spent on maternal and child health. But this will completely change, so our generation uh, largely will become one of the largest aged population in about 20 years, which is what we are talking about. And that is something that I want you to be careful of. So, I will stop. Thank you.